there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that button. I'd also like to thank Costway for sending me two of these beautiful topiary trees. I'll have more info on those in a few minutes. This is what my mantle normally looks like year round. I've had it like this for a couple of years. I have more of a beachy theme in my family room, but for spring, I want to up my game and add a whole bunch of different florals and colors and textures. I love using natural and rustic elements in my decor. So I've got a couple of twigs here. I'm just going to be cleaning up the bottom and the top to make it into the shape that I want, sort of like a mini tree. I have had my Cricut machine for over three years, and this is the first time that I tried print then cut. I am addicted. It turned out absolutely perfect. So what you do is you create your design in Cricut Design Space, then you send it to your printer, and then you send it to your Cricut machine, which then cuts out your images. These are tiny little flowers that have a pink interior, and I thought they would be perfect for for this project because I wanted to do little imitation magnolia flowers. I'm going to take each of these little flowers and fold it over and over again so I can make it a little bit more pliable. This is from cardstock so it's a little stiff and what I want to be able to do is sort of pinch the bottom and create a flower shape. Now it took me a little bit to kind of get the hang of this but once I did it turned out really cute. So as you can see I'm just kind of pinching it and then shaping it how I want it to be. Then I'm simply going to take some hot glue and start gluing it on the branches. I cut out 14 of these little flowers and I added all of them to this branch. Then I'm just going to take some little tiny boxwood leaves and I'm going to just add them to the branches that don't have any flowers on them and a little bit up and down. I want it to be really sparse. I want it to look twiggy. I want it to look really springy. Now, if you don't have a Cricut machine, then you can definitely still recreate this project. I'm using this boxwood and at the top of it, each of them has a little bit of a white kind of flower looking thing, almost like little buds. So I'm going to pull those off and I'll use those as my flowers and I'll just stick them on to the ends and wherever I feel it needs to be. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves, cut them off individually and hot glue them onto the branches. And then you've got a similar look just with a different type of flower. I'd also like to offer that if you have a Cricut machine and you don't know how to use print then cut, leave a comment down below if you'd like to have a detailed tutorial on how to do it. I decided to create some little wired bunnies and this is something that I saw someone do on Instagram. So I'm just trying to figure out how to do these. So I'm starting with a length of wire. Doesn't matter how long it is. You can just work with whatever you've got. I've made a little tail and now I'm bending the back of the bunny to make the little body shape. Then I'm going to just start bending the other things, making some ears, adding a little face. And I do use the my needle nose pliers there just to get more of a tinier crimp in it when I need to. Just like here, I'm just making a little front foot and then I'm going to hold it and bend the wire back over the other way. And then I'll be able to make a nice little face and then finish off the bunny ears on the top. Don't worry about making it perfect. I think the more imperfect it is, the more whimsical they look. So I created three little different types of bunnies and I also created three little birds. Once I had the birds and the bunnies complete, I took them outside and just gave them a light coat of white spray paint. 
My mantle has a collection of blue glass jars and vases and pots. And every time I go to the thrift store, I'm always looking for the blue glass. That's my theme for my family room, which is where my mantle is. So what I'm doing is taking some of these little twigs that I have, and I'm going to be gluing the little bunnies and the birds right on top of it. I did make a slice at the top of the twig so I could slide the little wire in and it would hold a little sturdier. Then I'm going to be drilling some holes into the corks that I have on some of the bottles and that's where I'll set in all of these cute little ornaments. I'm doing this video a little bit different. I'm going to show you all of the projects completed on my mantle at the very end. So I hope you'll stick around. Let me tell you a little bit about Costway. I have collaborated with them many times before, and now I am working with them for these artificial trees. They are absolutely beautiful. They have so many different types of styles. You're sure to find something that's going to fit perfectly into your decor. The ones I got are some tall boxwood trees. They're beautiful. They're so high-end looking. Here they are. I love them. You get a pair of them for $99. But with the discount code that you will get in Canada or the US, you're going to save even more. They've also given you a 10% discount when you use the coupon code for Canada or the US store. Everything is going to be linked down in my description box. So you'll be able to get everything you want from Costway. I've got this bird nest that I'm going to be adding some Spanish moss to around the edges just to give it more of a natural look. I'm also going to be adding some of these little twigs that were left over from my first project. These bird nests come with these little white and black speckled eggs, so I'm just going to throw three of them in there. Now, I know that bird nests usually don't have any greenery or florals on them, but I thought it would be pretty just to brighten this up a little bit. I'm using some of the leftover boxwood and eucalyptus that I have in my stash. I always take things apart when I'm done working with them or when I'm done creating, simply because I know I can use these greens in different projects along the way. I got this little bird from a dollar store. He has been used in a lot of different projects. I just gave him a coat of white paint and then sort of dark waxed him a little bit just to bring out some of the details. Now I'm adding these little faux baby's breath and I'm just going to poke them in. I don't even need glue for them and just take that all the way around. And then I'm going to set this on top of one of my blue canisters. I found this wooden crate at a thrift store a while back. I think I paid $3.99 for it. And I really like the color of it. It's sort of, it's got that orangey look, but it's still kind of rustic and natural looking. So I'm adding a little bit of styrofoam and that's just going to help me stick in these beautiful blue tulips that I absolutely adore. I had these in my patio last year. I'll probably take them at some point and stick them in my patio again for this year, but for now they're going to get used as spring decor. I'm just going to be cutting them apart. I don't like using the big branch all by itself because I want to be able to place these in such a way that they look beautiful in this crate. I want these tulips to look really natural so I'm going to be putting them in on an angle so they kind of droop over the side of the crate. Tulips tend to do that naturally anyway so I think it would look really pretty. And then I'm just going to keep filling it in until I get the look that I like. And there's no rhyme or reason about doing florals. All you have to do is make sure that you love how it looks.
Now I'm going to cut apart some of these little greenery stems. I got them off Amazon. Again, they'll be in my store and I'm just going to be adding them here and there and I'm going to spread them out a little bit too, tuck them underneath the flowers and just arrange them until I like the look I have. I used my wood laser machine to cut out these little sweet birds and I think they're so adorable. If you think I should put these up on my Etsy shop, let me know and I might do that. I'm just going to glue the two of them together. That just makes them 3D. And then I'm going to put some skewers on the back of them and poke them into my arrangement. I decided to make a couple of risers for my mantle and these spindle legs are actually a rolling pin that I got at a local craft store. I cut them in half and that's going to give me four legs for my little scrap piece of two by four here. I think this is about six inches long, maybe only five. I'm just going to use hot glue because that's going to work just fine. It's raw wood against raw wood and they'll hold up really well. And there won't be anything super heavy going on top of this anyway. For my second riser, I'm going to be using these wooden apples that I picked up at the Dollar Tree probably about three years ago. They've just been sitting in my stash. And I thought they would be perfect for little feet for this other larger two by four that I have here. I think that one's probably about eight or nine inches in length. It's also a different color because it happens to be a piece of pressure treated scrap that I had from some fencing. Again, hot glue will work just fine. Again, it's raw wood to raw wood. Even though it's treated, it's not painted or stained. So it's going to stick just fine. I'm putting the stem portion of the apple on first because these are have a flat bottom. And so that'll be perfect for my riser feet. For the small one, it's going to get a couple of coats of white chalk paint. I'm going to do the bottom and the legs as well. And then I'll just set that aside to dry. For the larger one, I'm going to mist it with a little bit of water first, and then I'm going to use this pre-made stain. It's just a bunch of acrylic paint with some water mixed in, and that's what I like to use. I've got it on hand all the time. It dries really quick, and there's no smell, and it doesn't stain your fingers. Once it's all applied, then I'm just going to use a paper towel and wipe off the excess, and I'll continue that all the way around. I also stained the apples, which are now little riser feet, and I did the same thing, just applied the stain and then wiped it off with a paper towel. The white is now dry on the little riser, so I'm going to take this big chip brush, I'm going to put it in some black paint, dab off the excess, and then just do some dry brushing. I always like to go lighter first with my dry brushing, and then if I want to add a little bit more, I can always do that. You can always put some white paint on top of it, but I never like the look of that because then it just kind of turns gray. And I really like the effect that the black has against the white. Here's another scrap wood project. I already had these deck boards cut down and all the angles, so I just sanded it and now I'm giving it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. I printed off this little graphic onto some tissue paper and I did create this graphic myself so it will be available on my website as a free printable. I'm deciding to put the whole thing on instead of cutting out just the graphic. I thought it would just make more sense to just put the tissue paper on the whole front of it. Then you won't see any of the lines of the tissue paper. I'm covering the whole front with a thin layer of Mod Podge. I don't want to go too heavy, but I want to make sure that it's all covered. And then I'm just going to simply lay the tissue paper right on top and press it down just using my fingers. Once it's completely dry, I'll just use some sandpaper to get off the excess tissue paper and just make sure that everything is adhered down well.
I'll use the same chip brush with the black paint and I'm going to just very gently go up and down just vertically following the grain of the wood and give it a little bit of distressing. Again, just making sure that I go very lightly to start and if I want to add a little bit more then I can do it. Then I just grab some black and white twine and I'm just going to go around it a couple of times on the bottom and just tie it off in a knot. You could always just use regular jute twine as well. I'm starting this project by taking some of these little wood discs and I'm going to use some hot glue and glue the eggs standing up right on top of it. That's just going to give the egg a flat base so it can stand upright. Then I grabbed these sort of oval shaped beads and I glued them on top of the eggs. When I got towards the end, I didn't like the look of these. So I end up ripping these off and putting some of those wood apples on again, but you'll see that at the end. I'm going to paint all three of them with the same color and this is just a really pretty sort of gray toned blue color and I thought that would go really well with the blue theme of my mantle. The wood beads only needed one coat but I did two coats on the eggs just to hide the white and the speckles. I took some blue pipe cleaners and folded them like bunny ears, then just hot glued them to the top of the head, which is now the wooden apples. Now I'm just using my little paintbrush with some white chalk paint, and I'm just going to give them a little distressing. I think these turned out super cute, and they look really sweet on my mantle. These Costway trees come in a black pot that's filled with concrete, so they're super heavy and they will definitely stand the test of time if you have them outdoors. Right now, I'm going to use them indoors and the black pot just doesn't work for what I wanted. Now, you could definitely just paint the pot if you want to, but I'm going to do something completely different. I started by grabbing eight of these spindles that I have. I find my spindles on Facebook Marketplace a lot and sometimes even the Habitat for Humanity Restore. These were really cheap. I think it was $16 and I think I got 16 or 18 of them. So basically they were a buck a piece. I cut them down to the size that I needed and they're all the same size. And now I'm going to take some white chalk paint and I'm going to go over them with a heavy dry brush. I want to get in the cracks and in the grooves. And then once I've got all the way around with the paint and I have it as heavy as I want, I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to just wipe off the excess. And it's literally going to transform the color of these from this sort of goldy orange color which is kind of an oak color to more of a bleached look. Look at the immediate difference in the color the gold is gone and it looks like a really beautiful whitewashed piece of oak. I'm going to continue with the next seven spindles doing the same thing and I really like how they turned out. I've got a piece of paper here and I have traced out the largest side or part of the pot that I'm going to use, which is actually just a white waste paper basket from Walmart, which is only $3. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So I've traced out the circle and now what I'm going to do is just fold it in fours so I can get the middle of the circle. And then what I'm going to do is trace out the bottom portion of the spindle. I want a little square notch out of my circle and I just thought this would be the easiest way to do it. 
I folded the paper in fours so I would be able to center the spindle right on the line and then I would know that it's all in like north, south, east and west and I wouldn't have to worry about trying to figure out where the middle of each area is. This is a piece of three millimeter basswood that I used my laser machine to cut out these notches, but you could definitely use something like a round sign from the Dollar Tree and then just cut out the notches with your scissors. Now I have to create little ledges on each of the spindles that I'm going to use that round piece of wood that I've notched out to sit on. So what I did was cut some more little pieces of extra spindle that I had and now I'm just going to be using some glue to hold it in place and then I'm going to pre-drill a hole and use a screw to hold them together. That's going to make it super sturdy. I'll need to do this whole process for all of the spindles because I have two trees and two pots to take care of. Here's that process one more time. Now I can put on my little round disc that has the little notches and you can see that it's just going to sit really nicely on all of the spindles. I'm just going to use hot glue to secure it in place for now and then I'm going to go through and add some nails to it. The drill bit I'm using is super tiny and I'm being really careful because it's kind of wiggly, but I needed to do that in order to put the nails in. Spindles are super hard and if you don't have a pre-drilled hole, you're not going to be able to hammer a nail in all the way. Next time I do a project like this, I really would like to have little panel nails or I'm probably going to just need to get some new brad nails for my stapler and then you wouldn't see the nail head so much. But it's nothing that a couple of coats of white chalk paint can't hide. I am in love with how these plant stands turned out. It was a vision that came to life perfectly. The waste cans that I used as the pot were $3 from Walmart and each of the spindles was about a buck. So you're looking at about maybe seven to $8 per plant stand compared to 25. I think they look absolutely amazing on either side of my fireplace. And here's how I styled my mantle. You'll have to let me know what you think of it.
Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you liked my projects and got inspired to create some of them for your own home decor. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.